off. I know. <laughs> Some of them are kind of realistic. Right? You know that? There's, hey. there's one in a house that everyone always uses. I forget where it is. There's one where it's like you're in a house. Oh, I got the, I got the bridge. Uh, you can do the bridge if you want. It looks realistic. Right there, right? I'm in space. Not from this world. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, I'm gonna get rid of this one though, because now we're just uh we're not doing see Jonah. This is why I couldn't use Zoom because we wasted like five minutes of recording just <laughs> trying to go back out. back for another casual conversation with the classic got a special co-host here with jonah and we got a very very special guest guys it's none other than bobby stevenson formerly known as damon camp how are you doing today good bro how you guys doing thanks for having me no of course man it's uh time to talk about uh and honestly like you were there in such a transitional period for nxt and so much happening there's there's a lot to talk about obviously what's going on in your future uh i'm looking forward to have this conversation yeah, me too. I'm excited for it. Yeah, and you know, Bobby, it's well known the athletes that you and your brother are. Your brother, Olympic gold medalist, you yourself already an accomplished professional wrestler. I'd love to know what was it like growing up in a house with such athletes like you guys. Uh man, that was tough. We were, uh, <clears throat> our parents really pushed us to be great, um, but I gotta say, like, uh, I think a lot of people that like, grow up with parents that are really involved in their sports. They like. They have negative things to say about like the parents always like telling them what to do how to live their life and stuff like that my parents are pretty lenient on how um but they allowed us to be kids but when it was also time to work it was time to work like in the wrestling room and stuff like that uh my dad he was he was our coach and hold on sorry uh my dad he was our coach and he always pushed us really good in the wrestling room but his main thing was just like he would always tell us before we before we went and wrestled. He was like, "I don't care about the wins and losses. I care about your effort." And he's like, "If you don't have any effort, you know that's when uh, we get cooked when we go home." <laughs> yeah. But um, no, growing up, it was, it was a really competitive household. You know, like everything we did, it would always end up in a fight. Um, <laughs> I was four years older than Gable, so I never threw the punches. I always let him punch me because I was like, I see. I was like, I was in, I was being high school. He'd be in middle school. I'd be in middle school. He'd be in elementary school. So I'm like, ah, I'm not going to punch him. I'll just, you know, <laughs> take the punches. Yeah. And uh, so yeah. it eventually got to the point where we were, we were, we played, we played soccer growing up. Uh, we had a wrestling mat in the garage. So eventually it just got to the point where like, we would always go on the wrestling mat, like me and Gable by ourselves. And it would always end up with someone like a fight, like breaking into the house or, or like me running away from him because I didn't want to hit him. I'm just like running because I'm like laughing my ass off. And then it's just like my dad's, my mom, dad, dad, and mom. They would uh, straighten it up real quick. But we were real competitive. You know, we we wanted to be great at everything. We were good at everything too. It's just yeah. uh, wrestling was our main thing. I was good at baseball. Uh, we never got to play football, which kind of sucked. Like we wanted to play football. My dad said <clears throat> he didn't want us to play football because you no, know, we were like we were some mean mother dudes back then when we were younger. <laughs> And we like if we were given the opportunity to play football, I think we would have hurt ourselves how bad we wanted to like hit someone, you know. But uh, our mom never let us play because she was always worried that we were going to get hurt. And which I don't blame her because we had a lot of friends that were real good at wrestling. They would tear their ACLs or something bad would happen in football and it would affect the wrestling season. So like I grew up in um, Indiana, uh, Portage, Indiana, like I was hour, 10 minutes from Chicago. Which is not much there. So like we had a, I wouldn't say it was like we were in, in the, in the slums. Or like you know, had a fight to get out. You know, but it was more so like you needed something to like get out of the area to see the world. So like wrestling was our ticket out. So we took it around like sixth grade. We got really serious with it because like I said, we played like a little bit of baseball. We would run. Uh, I, I used to run cross country okay. in middle school, but it was always a sport to benefit wrestling. 
both soccer, a lot of cardio, benefits wrestling, cross country, cardio, benefits wrestling. So we were always doing a sport that benefited our main sport. So when it came to our main sport, we were always in tip top shape before the season even started. But as the household went, it was, yeah, we were intense. We were, we were tense in there. <laughs> so it was just you and your brother? Yeah. Did, yeah. did you guys by any chance, like I know it was, you guys were obviously doing amateur wrestling and that's what you're talking about when you're talking about this. But did you yeah. guys grow up watching professional wrestling at all? No. So um, I think we were just so engulfed in what we were doing with our own thing. And so like we both knew who all the stars were. You know, the Randy Orton, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, Brock Lesnar, you know, Kane, Undertaker. We thought yeah. they were brothers at the time. <laughs> we had co- we had cousins that had the video game, so we were go over their spot and play the video game, and they they loved it. They, they were on the game like twenty four seven, and we would just jump on there. So that's kind of like we got to know the stars, but we to say that we were watching it like every WrestleMania, every SummerSlam, or every Monday, Monday and Friday nights, we weren't. But if it was on for me, I, like sometimes I'll catch it. But I, I think at the time I just wasn't really that interested in. The, I guess I just had other interests at the time growing up. What were some of those other interests outside of sports? Dude, I was always outside. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was always outside. So it was, it would go, because we were always involved in sports. So it was either you go from school, you come home, you chill a little bit, and you go to practice. The days we don't have practice, uh, my best friend was my neighbor. And he played, he was older. He was older. He's like 31. So he's like four years older than me. So you can only imagine, you know, so my best friend, Anthony, the way that I met him, because like we were always outside and like playing football, like doing baseball in the street, doing everything, riding bikes and stuff like that. Crazy yeah. to think about now, like riding bikes or like that. You know those pictures that you see with the, those like six bikes at a house, yeah. you know, like way back. And so that's we, when we, you were, where all the kids were hanging out. <laughs> yeah, you know, like yeah. that. Like that was us. And so, yeah. um, uh, my best friend Anthony, um, I was, I think I was in sixth grade. I came home from cross country practice and a guy knocked on the door and they were like newer neighbors. I knew the younger, I knew the younger brother, a little, uh, Roberto. And so he knocked on Anthony knocked on my door and I was like, he's, he's older, you know, I'm sixth grade. I think he was like a sophomore in high school. Yeah. And I looked at Gable and I was like, you know, who's this guy knocking on the door? And Gable was like, Gable, he was like, you guys see he was in elementary school, but we we were all freak athletes, so we always were able to hang with the older guy. Yeah. And so he was like, he was like, oh, that's Anthony. I was like, who's Anthony? He's like the new guy that lives two houses down. He's like, he he wants us to come out and play football with him. So like, he was he was a great athlete too. So like, we had to like, we we were always a step ahead because we were always playing with guys that were older than us or wrestling guys older than, older than us. So like, it was either cross country, soccer. I played a little. I played ball, ball, and baseball because that was the only time um, off from wrestling. Because you know, if you want to be great at wrestling, you know, you kind of got to do it year round. You know, you get a little yeah. bit of time off after the high school season, but the, the national season starts, and you got to roll right into it. You know, like how we said, like how I said, you know, you're trying to <clears throat> let your wrestling pay for your scholarship. You know, that's yeah. how we thought about it. We got. Well, that's how it was. Two things I take from that is one that was truly a generation like if you grew up on a block or a cul-de-sac with a bunch of friends you were outside all the time Doing and there wrong. was a there and there was a hierarchy there was the oldest kid the second oldest kid and everyone was above the kid under them but you learned to kind of tough it out with the older kids and yeah you know i remember we used to like yeah we played street hockey and basketball and all that stuff too and bikes playing cops and robbers and yeah <laughs> biking biking out of the neighborhood beyond where we're supposed to go to do bad things but we yeah. also like box each other or we'd wrestle on trampolines oh, that does toughen that off yeah. that obviously toughens you up and then to the second part of that i want to bring up is just that that's true like just like with wrestling and anything else you, you even if you get an off season it's about reps and continuing to do it right and yeah. I, I think that's a big part of it yeah that's what you mentioned the trampoline thing so we had a trampoline <laughs> in our backyard and a pool yeah yeah so what we what we used to do is we would have people over and we would like to have ufc fights on the tramp on the trampoline yeah you know we we were like we were all kids so we didn't have money to go like buy the gloves so my boy anthony he i don't know how he got he had like a a set of ufc gloves only one set so we each only got one glove so we just like punch each other on the on the trampoline or we were like try to do jujitsu and think we were like george st pierre or or, or, like matt hughes and 
crap like that on the trampoline and stuff like and stuff. And then um, yeah, we were we were all always doing so. We were never sitting inside, never sitting inside. Our parents used to kick us out. They wanted us outside until like we had yeah. to come in to eat or whatnot. It was the same yeah. thing. My brother had a kickboxing bag, so I had kickboxing gloves. But then I had some little toy bags, so I had these other like puffier gloves. And yeah. we'd <clears throat> they weren't even we'd be boxing each other with these two sets of gloves, and they were yeah. completely different. Did you ever use the uh the Hulk gloves? No, I didn't. Oh, the big, big like the Hulk yeah, smash the big, ones. Yeah, the Hulk I've smash ones. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> we used to box with those in the house too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, eventually, I think my mom threw those away because we just got a little bit too rowdy with those. That's yeah, those could do some damage. Seriously, <laughs> <laughs> I'm still amazed by the fact you guys never played football. I think that's that's crazy. Oh. You guys could have definitely done some damage. But to fast forward to when you do uh get interested into getting into wwe i heard that your point of contact is actually paul Heyman. yeah such a crazy great mind for the business that he is how did it feel to be able to have an open line of communication with him and and know that he was someone you got to you were able to speak to that crazy that, that was in 2019 and i have pictures wow. of us backstage with uh triple h and paul Heyman. <clears throat> so they, they invited us to come out to the show it was actually like yeah it was my first show ever and uh paul he hooked it up he hooked it up the few like the few times we went before we came down he hooked it up great we were like right underneath the hard cam like right in the front oh wow so yeah. we had like front row seats he hooked it up he hooked us up every time and we just text him like hey here we go He's like no problem got you and then um so he would hook it up and then that's so, like the first show in 2019 uh you know we went to the backstage and everything got to meet triple h my parents came with and um we all had a good talk. Paul Heyman was there. We all got pictures. You know, we were being like little fanboys and stuff like that. And then, um, so we showed up to the arena. Paul was like, I'll be out in a few. He was like, because at the time he was with Lesnar. He was like, uh, I'll be out in a few. We just landed on the jet. We'll be at the arena soon. And I was like, man, they're big time. All right, we're, you know, whatever. Like, they're showing up on the jet, whatever they're doing. And then he's like, I'll send someone to come out and get you. And then so the whole time he's doing that, he's just like, Texting, and we're like kind of like mind blown, like, well, this guy is really texting us right now, you know. And then, um, went backstage, got to mingle with some of the talent and stuff like that. Um, no, it was I still got all the video, I even got the video when I think it was like when um, uh, Roman Reigns was like the big junkyard dog, the so, big dog, the, the big, big dog, dog. yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, you see? yeah so like, that was like 2019, and I was like, actually starting yeah. to get into it, so like, excuse if I didn't, you know, wasn't that into it but like yeah we got to see all that now that was really cool and like we went to a few more shows and you know paul he always always hooked it up he's the one that like got us in the door and like during the covid too it was a tough time because i graduated in 2020 yeah and Me too. <clears throat> yeah covid yes yeah so like i graduated in 2020 he was he was setting everything up like real legit um like no no uh bull crapping around and he was legit so he was messaging me and i was like yeah i want to come he's like oh, we're not hiring right now you know it's um it's covid and i was like crap so it was like graduated and that was like my plan to go to but you know it was covid so i was like oh all right so it's gonna lead to another for the funny story so i was with uh doing that i was like all right i gotta get a job i gotta do something so like originally i wanted to do the secret service so i mm -hmm. but in order to be in the secret service, you need to have two years of full, like full job experience. I was yeah. D one division one wrestler. There's no time to get another job, like a full time job. <clears throat> so I was like, all right, I'll go work in the prison. I was working at a prison. I was working there for like, you know, seven months before I was able to come down. But it's funny because uh, when they started opening up the the perform uh, the performance center more, that's when uh, Triple H hit us up and he wanted a Zoom call with me and my brother. And keep in mind, I was working and I was expecting to be off at two o'clock and he, he scheduled the meeting for two o'clock and yeah. we were short, we were short, we were short in the prison. Like we didn't have that many employees because COVID, no one was trying to work or anything, anything like that. And no, like no one wanted to work in prison like during COVID. Right. And then, so I go, I was like, of course, all right, I get off at two and he wants to, he wants to zoom call at two. All right, let's, let's, let's do it. And then like. 45 minutes before I got forced to work the next shift because like I said, we were pretty short staff. So I had to work the, the two to 10 shift also. Yeah. And I was like, crap, bro. I, like, bro, I got a Zoom call 
Triple H, I'm not missing this. So <laughs> yeah. So between so between the uh, each uh, shift, we get like a little break. So this is when I went. We, we weren't allowed to bring phones in the prison, so we had to leave them in our car. So I was taking the Zoom call from the parking lot of the prison. You only yeah. imagine that, you know, you're 50 feet away <laughs> from um, inmates and you're talking to Triple H on the phone. And so I was like, all right, this is going to go smooth. It's going to go smooth. And then my Zoom wasn't working. My Zoom, like the video wasn't working. Like the link wasn't working or something wasn't working. So Gable was on there. I was trying to figure it out. And of course, as I'm figuring this out, <clears throat> I'm texting him. I'm texting, I think I was texting his assistant. And I was like, yo, I need to get on this call. Like, this is like, this is like future opportunity. This is my job that I want to do right, right now. And then um, eventually, of course, that takes like 20 minutes and my shifts, my, my, my break time's almost up. So I get on the call, we start, we start chatting it up or whatever. And I keep in mind, um, I'm supposed to be on the next shift and the people, the officers inside, they can't run, they can't run and do a round, like, because we were checking on the inmates and stuff like that. Yeah. They can't do a round unless there's five officers in the cell block. So okay. they couldn't do anything until I was there. And then, so I was on there, I had my, 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 my uh, little radio. They're like, officer Stevenson, report back uh, to the unit. I was like, oh crap. I turned the microphone down a little bit, my, my, my walkie talkie. And then as I'm talking to Triple H, we're, we're, just, we're just chopping it up and whatnot, just talk about the job and stuff like that. I get another one, officer Stevenson, report <laughs> to the unit. I'm like, father. I turned it down a little more. <laughs> turn my turn my uh, microphone down even more because I, I I'm I'm not missing this. Yeah. Like, <clears throat> and then um I get another one. Of, they blow my speaker up my uh, microphone. Officer Stevenson, report back to the unit now. And I was like, threat. And then um I was like, I told um I just called Paul. I was like, yo, I gotta go. I'm sorry, I gotta go. And I felt I felt real bad, you know, because. <clears throat> You know, you're talking to the boss of the company. And um, I went back inside, and then that was, like, my first strike. I got in trouble for it. And I was like, it was worth it. I was, I was talking to Triple H outside. Yeah. I take a strike. <laughs> <laughs> and, I mean, you ended up there anyway. So, like, mm -hmm. you know. How was uh, your relationship with Triple H then? Because, I mean, early on, Paul Heyman's introducing you to Triple H. You're on calls with Triple H. Was he, like, really excited and interested in you and your brother coming in? Yeah. Like, uh, like I said, we were on the Zoom call with him. I don't know how many people get a Zoom call yeah well you know he's so you know he's so exclusive in, in himself so I, I know how many people get a zoom call with them or you know get his phone number or, or whatever, whatever stuff you know i'm sure everyone has it but you know whatever yeah but um and uh no he was great no, he was real helpful and uh you know like i said i had i'd send him a text here and there you know when he was going through his heart thing and i sent him a message i was surprised he, he messaged back and i was like yo i hope you're feeling good you know that's scary stuff and he's like thank you and you know we just Quick, quick text messages. I knew he was the boss. And I didn't want to be that, yeah. that one little talent, like texting him. Hey, how did you like my match? You like this. So I, just, I really just kept it, you know, professional on, on that side. But um, he, he was great. Every time he, every time I got to see him, great interaction. Every time I got to see Paul Heyman, it was all great, all hugs, and it was, it was great. They're great people. Just so there's not a missing piece to the story, I, I don't think we really actually figured out. Like, how did Paul Heyman discover you guys? Mm. How did he know you guys? Um, because they're pretty popular in Minnesota. Yeah. And Les Lesnar was coming down. Okay. Lesnar came. He came to the wrestling room a few times. Because he, obviously, he wrestled at the University of Minnesota. And, yeah. the, and the coaches, the two coaches that, um, that are still there at the University of Minnesota, they were all in the same class. They won national championships together. Okay. Then, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So uh, Lesnar would come. Sometimes he'll come into the room. And then I actually got to work out with him one time. So I was like pretty starstruck you know like the the big dog comes in the weight room then you want to do it you want to like lift all the heavy weights yeah you know? so <laughs> and then, uh, no he, he was he was great too so um yeah we just got that connection through through him and then i think gable got like third at the ncaa tournament so that kind of like raised a little bit of um some eyes for him too uh, yeah. to have lesnar come down and and all those guys so it was great let me ask you about your transition into wrestling now, because obviously it's a whole different world and it's all new to you. What were some of the things that were most surprising to you about professional wrestling? Like the the way that you guys, the, they do train and stuff like that. And yeah. then secondly, like what's the situation coming into professional wrestling as an athlete compared to coming in as like an independent wrestler? I think just the choreograph. Yeah. Stuff or re remembering everything or just 
you know, ha having a plan out and stuff like that and how, you know, when, once you get on live TV, you're at a time and your time could get cut because other things can go on the show and just having to adjust to that. And that was like a whole other yeah. thing too. It's like having to adjust to that and just like having, like knowing your stuff and knowing your go-tos and like knowing what to cut out, but not making it look like crap. And, um, so that was like the hard thing. And the other hard thing was like coming from amateur wrestling, you know, we're always taught to be like, go, 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 no emotion, you know, your uh, stoic face, like no emotion at all in amateur wrestling. And then coming into pro wrestling, total opposite. So that was like the hard thing for me at first was just to open up because like I'm, I'm normally a quiet person and I'm, I'm, not, I'm normally, I'm normally not over the top outside of the ring, but when I'm in the ring, I'm like, obviously I'm, I'm at work. So I got to flip, I got to flip the switch on. And that's funny because yeah. like my, my parents and friends will watch, watch me wrestle. And they're like, you don't normally act like that. Why are you acting like that? Like you're so funny. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm all, I've always been funny. But this time I'm actually, got, I got to go to work on that na um, national television. So I look stupid, you know? And then um, that was the other hard thing. But I got to thank Ta Terry Taylor for that, yeah. really having me open up. Because he was my he was my main coach pretty much the whole time I was there at um in NXT the performance center my main coach and he was he was always talking about yo you just gotta open up you're a heel he would always talk about you gotta take an entertaining ass whooping you know so I always watch The Rock when he would get beat up by Stone Cold yeah, lost man, that's... he was always like over the top the selling the flipping around the you know tripping over your own feet you know so I was like oh I was like because I, I was already like that around my friends you know it's being fun and goofy and stuff like that so I was like all right. Yeah. Like, transition that to the ring let me be over the top or however i gotta be uh to make myself look dumb when it's time to, for myself to look dumb for the baby face to beat me up so i gotta thank terry for that and then um i forgot what was your other question the second one so uh, and also before we move to the second part of the question though that i always find it fascinating like i've had a lot of people tell me like they didn't realize the ropes actually hurt as much as they hurt <laughs> Um, if you come from athletics as the whole, you know, when yeah. you're in, when you're an athlete, you're focusing on yourself and what you have, like the task you have at hand. And you're not really listening to the audience. You, you learn to yeah. tune them out. When yeah. wrestling, you like are supposed to listen to them. Yeah. I just find it so yeah. fascinating. There's so many things, you know, that you have to like learn in that transition. Yeah. So like my first match I wrestled, I was like tunnel vision. And I was yeah. like, match, match, match. Didn't care about <laughs> yeah. anything else. And yeah. that took, that took a little bit to finally like hear the crowd and then just to be like not rush to the next thing right. instead of being here like all right i did something cool let me uh you know let me fire up right now or let me do a little gimmick thing because <clears throat> i'm learning to listen to them so that took that took a little bit but the, yeah the ropes hurt up doing i'm thinking yeah. i came down for my tryout i it didn't the first time i ran them i was like yeah these kind of hurt a little bit because i was working <laughs> with uh robbie brookside yeah. I was running the ropes and he would have me do all these drills for my tryout. And then I was running the ropes and then uh, I went to go take a shower. And I looked at my back and I was like, holy crap, my whole back was just like completely just destroyed and all roped up. <clears throat> and then there was another funny thing. I took my first bump. I know sold it so good. So they don't even know yeah. to this day. <laughs> so um, I took my first bump. So like before my tryout, I was going on YouTube. And I was watching all the other tryouts. And like whatever I, whatever I was finding on YouTube, I would like type in WWE WWE Performance Center tryouts like which way yeah and like show me how to take a bomb it was like hey you get you get up going to the right um take a bomb going here duck in boom I was like all right so I was studying before I actually went down but when it came to taking my first bomb uh Brookside was like all right lad because he, he's um he's from the UK so he always said yeah. lad yeah and then um he was like, all right lad time to take a bomb and I was like all right I was like, I'm ready I I studied this on YouTube I'm ready to go so I take my bomb. I bounced my head off the mat. No sold it. I was I was yeah. dizzy. No sold it. They don't even know. <laughs> so like I went to go bump, boom. I was like, oh crap. I know got back up. He was like, another one. Like, all right, we're doing this. Boom, boom, boom. My head was ringing that whole time. But I, I no sold it. I wanted I wanted that. And it was crazy yeah. because I, I almost because I had you had to like do like a quick little med medical thing before you um or able to get in the ring. So like I almost that first day at the time they wanted me to come down for like only a few days and then i told them i was like the guy that was in charge of talent at the time i was like i want to come down as long as i can come down to prove to you guys that i want this and then for you guys to actually get a good look at me I, like, I didn't want to come down for like a day or two like i actually wanted to like be around it and then um <clears throat> uh what was i getting at 
Oh, that that bump must have came back in my head. Uh, <laughs> but you yeah, really want to prove yourself. Around. You yeah. really want yeah, to prove really yourself, want, and you really want to prove that you want to be there. And that's actually the perfect yeah. segue to the second part of the question, because yeah. I recently had uh, Mojo Rawley on my show, uh, Dima Matadi, and he was talking about. I asked him, I'm like, you know, coming in from football, I'm like, when you come to like FCW, the PC, is there like a little bit of tension between the guys that come from athletics with an athletic background, and the guys that came up on the independence? Yeah, the time yeah. you came in. <laughs> there was quite a few more independent wrestlers there still that period um yeah so i'm just curious for you like i you, uh, clearly you really wanted to do it and you proved that you really wanted to do it but how was that at the beginning was there a little bit of a let's because he's like oh they try to run the athletes away oh they, they try to run them out of there as, as quick as they can and tell you prove yourself yeah there was that there it was definitely a little something because like you know the independent guys <laughs> they, they've been doing it for like so long and then they finally get there and they're like oh who's this new guy coming out of college wrestling thinking you can come in here and do this but it, it was never nothing like negative but there was definitely like you you can feel it a little bit you know it's like the new guy on the job you know yeah and then um yeah it, it was it was different but like once you actually get to get in the ring with them and and then just like learn from them and show them because at the time you know you got some heavy you got some heavy heavy hitters there when i when i first got there yeah so it was more so it's just like you know keep your mouth shut and your ears open and mm -hmm. then just learn it you know, because if you're extra serious about learning it, you know, they'll see it, you know, they'll, like they obviously see who wants to be there and who doesn't and who's just trying to collect a check and doesn't really care about it. You know, I actually cared about it. So I was actually into it. So I felt like I, I as I, the matches went on and the better I got, the more I kept wanting to like, I would ask for feedback from like all those guys and stuff like that, along with my coaches. <clears throat> and eventually just like you earn, you earn everyone's trust because like they don't want the new guy coming in dropping them on their neck you know yeah. so once i once i once i got in there and, and showed that to them they were like all right this guy's good you know we will we'll work with them and like and this stuff like that you know yeah and i mean they're both hard journeys to get on like being an athlete is hard and an accomplished athlete but being on the independence they think it's real hard for them they're grinding on those wrestling in front of the 10 people in, in yeah. somewhere you know what i mean so like there's just a mm -hmm. different attitude and then i think there's also the stigma like well you know, we don't want anyone coming in here that like just wants to be on TV and wants to be famous. Yeah. Maybe using this to catapult to something else. And yeah, yeah, I, I always found that interesting. Mm -hmm. No, I was kind. I was kind of. I guess when I was there for like this, almost a three years, pretty much almost three years. You kind of what once you care about it so much, you don't want anyone just to come in just because they think it's cool. Because like yeah. the uh, all three shows are hot. And you don't want anyone coming on the show that's going to like, you know, kind of half in, half out, you know, because you don't want, you don't want the show to look bad, you yeah. know? So I, I was kind of getting to that point where I was, I was never verbal about it, but I was like, and I was also so new, like I wasn't a better, I was only doing it for three years. So like, I can't go up to these guys like, yo man, you need to be doing this. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I, I never really yeah. felt like that was my place to do so because I was still new myself. I'm like, who do I look like going up to the new guy? Like I'm still new too, you know. There's yeah. guys here that were doing it for like 15 years and stuff like that. It's like they can do that, you know. You're a three three but, year vet. <laughs> yeah, I was like three year vet, and then, then I was like, dude, I'm still learning myself. You know, I'm going, yeah. I'm learning as I'm going. Like I was real humble about. It. I never had, I never like got an ego from anything. Like all the sh like all the shows I was on, the the PLE the main event and all the other stuff. I was like, I'm still going. I'm still like pushing forward. And I'm trying to help, you know, prolong myself along. So like. There's no need. I, I never felt like there was a place for me to like go up to a guy and like, yo, we need to straighten it up. Like, you know, let the 15 year 15 year guys do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy, the Wrestling Classic. Here, guys, I want to let you guys know that there's a limited edition Wrestling Classic tee I'm wearing it right now. But I got to show you the back because it's in collaboration with none other than HQ Clothing, guys. It says Conquered in the back because that's what we do out here, conquering it every day, guys. Wear this shirt. Remember to conquer it. Do the thing. Keep doing the thing. HQ Clothing, Headquarters Clothing, guys. Limited edition Wrestling Classic shirts. There's only like 70 left. There's only 100 printed. Make sure you get them before they're gone. I truly, truly, truly appreciate your support. Conquer it. Get it now. Uh huh. Put the link in the description below. No, and I mean, speaking of new, like you were saying, we, um, when you were signed, you got moved up to 205 Live within like two months, I think, right? Yeah, it was quick. I mean, that Maybe must that was have been insane. Yeah. Yeah, so when I got there, I, I literally had my first match because like um, we would do 
PC live shows. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's just confirmed that, I don't know if you know, but the people that don't know, it was just like um, all talent, you know, on a Friday morning, or sometimes we would do them during the week. You know, if we had a light week, we wouldn't do, we wouldn't do training. We would just come in and do like the PC live where we just get matches. We get reps, you know, just in front of the, the uh, performance center and the coaches. Yeah. And stuff like that. So when I first got there, I literally had my first match like five weeks in and it was only five weeks in because i was supposed to have it like three weeks in my first match i was gonna i was wrestling hideki hideki suzuki he was in diamond Line. okay yeah yeah I, I hope, sorry if i messed his name up but um i was supposed to wrestle him and then i was in training like a few days before and i split my eye open with a, uh, someone clothesline yeah. someone clo- it was a, a mishap by the clothesline and it split my eye open and so, like, I had to push that back. I had eight stitches across my eyelid right here. So, like, I was I was moving along, like, really, really quick, which I was really happy with. And then, so, the 205 Live, I was, like, two months in. I wrestled Andre Chase. And, like, that's I was, like, tunnel vision. I was still trying to, like, figure it out. So, that, that all happened pretty quick. So, like, the, the trajectory was, like, going up quick, like, as soon as I got in the door, which was, like, I, I was happy about it. Cause, like, that's the plan. Yeah. You want to get there. You want to get on TV as fast as you can. You know, show everyone that you, you can do it. And then, um, yeah, it was Andre Chase. That was my, my very first. Yeah, you know, that was like my overall. That was like my fifth match. And then the fifth oh, match wow. was on TV. Was on TV. So it, yeah, it was quick. <laughs> and how long uh, until you actually get paired up with Diamond Mine? That must have been nice being so new to be paired with a team of people who have kind of been there for a while too. Yeah, that was like five. Like five months in. Five months. Six yeah. months in, five, six months in. It, it can't happen pretty quick. <clears throat> and it, it was great to work with them. You know, like I've known uh, the Creed brothers before, before uh, pro wrestling. You know, they did amateur too. So I wrestled Brutus in college. Uh, oh, me wow. and Julius. Yeah, me and Julius. Cool. We, we, we known each other just from, you know, like wrestling the small world. So everyone knows that yeah. and stuff like that. So we already had that kind of relationship of knowing each other from the competitive side. Now we're working together. And that was Roderick Strong the guy that knew he was he was great so it was great to like get thrown to them and that's when like i had like i had to learn pretty quick because we were in some big spots pretty yeah. quickly and then i was a new guy i was like all right we gotta sink or we gotta swim and i was yeah. swimming i was swimming and then um that was great that's why like, i learned about you know just you know working with uh rather strong like when you get to a certain point you don't have to talk about every step of the match which is like, hey, up here, I'm gonna punch you two times. You're gonna go to the corner, kick you twice. You're gonna go here, boom, boom, boom. So like with him, he doesn't. Like he's he's great. So he already knows what he's doing. So I was the new guy. I'm like, bro, what are you gonna do here? What are you gonna do here? And he's like, oh, it doesn't work. But we 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 like he took care of me out there. So when we wrestled, I learned to like during the heat, just not calling your heat in the back. Because then there's this little choreographed, and then if something doesn't go right, it looks like crap. Because if you didn't talk about it in the back and then if something goes wrong out there, you're like, oh, you know. So six months in, I had to move in quick. And then that's when, like, I learned about, like, your time being cut. You can get added time. You got to listen to the, like, that comes back to, like, being able to, like, listen when you're out there and not being tunnel vision on the what you're doing. That's when I had to learn pretty quickly to listen to my the referees and, like, calling some stuff on the fly. And this, when I was wrestling, uh Every, to everyone I wrestled, they were veterans compared to me. So, like, when they would call call stuff out there, they were like, yo, neck breaker, double down, or something like that, whatever. And I'm like, okay, boom. And then uh, listen to the ref, listen, listening to how I was wrestling, listen to the fans, and I was like, I had to learn quick, or I would have been, ex- like, exposed pretty quick, only six months in. Yeah. And like I said, I loved it. So I was like, I was willing to go. I was like, let's do it, man. I'm, I'm in. Yeah. But it, it was great. It was great working with them. It was real fun. And like you obviously got like you already kind of touched on how much it was good to have someone that's a veteran in the business like Roderick Strong, who has probably been doing this like 15 years yeah. and more, and to learn from him. And he took you guys kind of under his wing for that period of time. What was the transition like when he left? One, you were the guy that took him out, but two, yeah. like what was the transition like when he left? And it was like, oh, now like we're on our own with a diamond mind, but it's just us. What was that yeah. transition like? Did they have a conversation with you guys being like, hey, like we're going to keep this going with just you guys or? Yeah, so it was like I said, I was on the defense. So like that match, that ambulance match, it wasn't supposed to be me. It was supposed to be oh, wow. um 
Julius versus um, Roderick. Roderick. Yeah. Because if you go back and watch, everything is kind of Roddy's fault. And then we're, we're like slowly figuring it out. And we were doing it. But I think something, I think he had a, I think he had an injury or something, or, or there was something else going on that I'm not too familiar, familiar about. So I'm not going to touch on it. So it was, we were, all the matches we were doing against like uh, Pretty Deadly, uh, mm-hmm. the D'Angelo family, uh, Gallus, there was always something in the match where we were, it was blamed on Roddy. But then when the time came to the, like we finally found out he he's he's doing this he's he's causing he's he's the he's causing the imploding. So I think something bad happened over with, like something happened with that. And then it was literally we were filming one night, and um, we were like um, the writer came up. He was like, "Damon's gonna make the turn," and I was like, "What do you mean make the turn?" He's like, uh, you're making the turn on the group. You're gonna turn heel on everyone. And like at the time, I didn't know how to take it because like I'm so new, so like I didn't know what the opportunity was. Right. You know, I was like, am I doing good things? Am I doing bad things? Like, do they like my work? Do they not like my work? And like, why am I turning on the group? I just got in the group. We were doing great things. Now all of a sudden, I got I got to change because I was supposed to be with the group for a little for a while or whatever. And they're like, yo, uh, something's wrong with him. So like, you're gonna make the turn. We're gonna keep in mind we already filmed all that stuff like months in advance it was like months of stories yeah months of stories and stuff so we were planning for this big thing to turn so but how they did it like the writers are so good of like flipping it so like at the what was it, it was it's um the tag team title match against pretty deadly at worlds collide and they're like yo we're gonna make the turn this and this was like like first like we did a few main events of the show but this was like my first moment for me when I had to yeah. do the chair, the chair shot. Yeah. And I was like, then this time I was like eight months in. I'm like, dude, this is a big moment. If I miss this chair shot, I'm cooked. Like, this is like the <laughs> biggest, like a huge moment. If I miss this, I, I probably won't be here tomorrow. Yeah. And then uh, they're like, so we uh, did the rehearsal and whatnot. And they're like, hey, when it looks like, uh, so what we had is Creed Brothers did something big. We had one of the um, pretty deadly pretty deadly brothers come in i speared them i was all fired up and that was like the thing to like set the set the mood like oh the creeds are finally gonna because they were going they were doing story stuff where like they were always getting so close but they couldn't get it so which is why i got brought into the group to help them you know win the title and a big spear happened the crowd was going insane and whatever and then this was the time that uh creed brother was going to hit his finish one two three they won the title and they're like yo you hit that spear you fire up to him, like you do whatever you do towards him. You're going to pick this chair up, and as he's going to line it up, you need to hit him. And I was like, oh, crap, this is huge. And, like, so, like, the whole day, I felt like I was doing a match. Because, like, even I was only seven months in, seven, eight months yeah. in, and I'm getting a big spot. So, like, yeah, he goes to hit this finish, you need him with the chair. And then um, he went to go hit it. Boom, hit him, turn hit the finish and the place was going nuts and that was like the time i actually first like it was like one of the times i heard the crowd and like you go back and look at the pictures everyone was on their feet because no one no one expected me to do it because like everything was being planned was 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 toward um rather strong yeah and then i do it and the place is going insane and um i was like all right yeah i'm a heel now and then it was like it was like a big relief because i felt like i was doing the match it was just like hey you just got hit with the chair like it's easier for you to say you know i'm eight months in i don't know this yeah. <laughs> and then um, well, so yeah we did that and then we went on a run of me just like terrorizing them and then we just did the, the blow off match at the uh, halloween have um and we've only really seen a handful i feel of ambulance matches in the history of wwe and it's really cool that you were able to be in one how did that become an ambulance match? I know it wasn't originally supposed to be you, but do you remember how that got okayed to be an ambulance match? Uh, I'm not sure. It was just how we have an ambulance match fit. I don't know what went on. I don't know what, they, what the writers and stuff talk about, but we were told it's an ambulance match. And then that's like, I went to back to study a few matches. And I'm like, there's not many ambulance, ambulance matches oh. to study from. <laughs> and that so actually, I was like... Yeah. I was going to say, that might be the only night there was a casket match and an ambulance match on one show. Yeah. Too. It was crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, um, yeah, we got told we were doing that. And then I was like, all right. You know, we got like, what can we use? What can we not use? And we had we had some other fun ideas. 
that we wanted to um we in the creed we wanted to pitch like uh me driving the ambulance we were gonna like mm. pre-record it me driving the ambulance and hit him with it <laughs> like hit him hit him with the ambulance like as i'm driving yeah. hit him and that's how we would start yeah so we were gonna we were gonna we were gonna pre-record it like i'm driving him he's walking to the arena i hit him we start the fight into the arena yeah but it, it just didn't get okay it was it was a little bit too you know hitting someone with a vehicle I and mean, too many too many uh too much room for air right there yeah, yeah then, fair um, enough fair enough yeah too much room for air <laughs> and then uh <laughs> so no that match was great you know we we went in we we, we were really uh because like we did so many great things and we got so many great reactions like i still go back not anymore like i go back to that clip and that clip has like millions of views oh yeah of, of me hitting with a chair and, and like millions of, it's still it's still going up millions of views and i was like yo like we, we already knew what it was like we got to be hard hitting here we can't miss you know chair shots gonna be in there everything has to be in there because like we built this that we had so much momentum going into it so i was like we got to we gotta nail it and that's what we did we nailed it and uh it was great it hurt the next day i couldn't move my arm like mm-hmm. this arm was like shot so i think I, I took 10 chair shots 10 chair shots to it to my back and this arm I, this back my back was numb my arm was numb wow like i was literally in the ambulance it felt like i was because when, when the door closed i was like i right, finally i laid down like once the rush went like went down Cause like it felt like forever that ambulance was driving. I'm like, where are we going? Because like they had to, they had to yeah, they had to where drive did off. They take you, yeah. yeah. Because they were filming, so we had to like drive off. And like I thought we were just gonna drive off and turn around at the end of the street. Yeah. I don't know if you've been to the performance center, turn around right there. And like the adrenaline was going off, and my back was starting to hurt. I couldn't move. My arm was literally like stuck <laughs> like this. I couldn't move. And then um. I was like yelling in the back, and I was like, where are we going? Like all I had to do was turn around. <laughs> And like it was like a big dump and like an adrenaline dump. And I was like, yo, where are we going? He's like, we're turning around. And I was like, ah, oh, my arm, and I can't move my, my arm. My arm was hurting. And like he's like, Are you actually hurt? I'm like, Yes. <laughs> turn around. Like, turn around, bro. <laughs> like, we don't need to actually go to the hospital. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and then uh, yeah, I turned around, but it, it was great. So I think we um we really did um that rivalry great justice, you know. We, I think we did we everyone did great business in that one, in that in that uh, to, to close that off. I've been to the performance center and I've left there when it's nighttime. And if you even looked out the window, you might not know where you are. It's in such an industrial area. Like, yeah. Well, there, was no, <laughs> there was no windows in the back of the, the ambulance. I was oh, laying no. on the floor. I'm like, I didn't know that. That's crazy. Yeah. I was like, bro, turn around now. <laughs> Life works in such mysterious ways, though, because obviously Roddy left and then you end up working with Julius in that ambulance match. And then now knowing the fact that you guys knew each other before wrestling and maybe wrestled each other on the amateur amateur level and seen each other, to think that now you're in WWE, both of you, and you're wrestling each other in like a, a big headline match that people were looking forward to. Like, that's, that's got to be cool. Yeah. Right? No, it was, it was really cool. Let's be able to like, like no one knows where, where you're going to be in a few years. Yeah. You know, and then we got to do it, and then getting to work with like Tony D because me and Tony D, we known each. I known him, and we've known each other in high school. So like oh, I wow. used to live, yeah. I used to I used to go up to because their high school was really good, and so I would sometimes go to their high school. My dad would drive me over, and I would practice with uh, Tony at his high school, or like real wrestle. So we we already knew each other from that, and through and of course through college too. So then like getting getting to work with him too is like oh dude, I'm being, I was like pretty cool you know like we were just wrestling yeah. each other you know 17 18 years old and now we're you know 10 years later we're wrestling on the, on the tv so. did, did anybody make any comments about julius's gear that night because it looked like he was wearing boxers i heard i, I, I read a few yeah i read a few. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, did you prefer a few. did you did you at that point did you prefer being a baby face or heel now looking back uh i enjoyed i enjoyed being a heel yeah, because like like I like I touched on with Terry Taylor, Taylor, like he helped me be over the top. So I thought it was always fun to be really over the top, mm-hmm. and then just to get heat. And I always I always thought that was really fun. But the baby face, I mean, I was the baby face a little bit. I think we could did a, did a little a little bit more just to help build the baby face stuff up. So uh, it would have been cool to like have the opportunity to like turn baby face again and see what that reaction was because I felt like yeah I was a pretty solid heel. Yeah, and like to be able to come back to be baby face and see what me being a baby face five months in versus uh you know two and a half years in three years in 
I think that would have been pretty cool to see like that and see what the what the fans thought and stuff like that. No, for sure. Well, another a big focal point of NXT 2.0, a fellow freak athlete, Braun Breaker, who's killing it now. Were you there when Breaker came in, or did you come and he was already there? No, I came in like seven months later. Okay, I'd love to hear yeah, what your reactions with Braun Breaker were, and uh, and seeing his work that he did in 2.0. That was great. Um, I know his dad was doing it, so I look back on the clips of his dad. Oh, you look just like your dad, you know? Cool. Yeah. And then, uh, he, he was, <laughs> yeah. So he was a freak. He was a freak athlete, and then I got to. So like in the house shows, I wrestled pretty much everyone in the house shows. So we got to wrestle in like a six man on the house show. So we got to touch a little bit. Oh, and cool. then we got to, we were in the same class as Perry Taylor. So we got to roll around a little bit, but we never really got to like work a TV match. But it would have been cool to, to work a TV match with him. But yeah, he's great. He's doing great. You ever see him hit the ropes like we do on Raw now and move the ring? Yeah. So like <clears throat> we were we, in class, you know, it was pretty much. In Terry's class, he all he has all like the um, top talent. I would say so. We had like it was me, Trick, um, Tony D, Braun Breaker, Carmelo. Uh, we had Obafemi. Who else did we have? And at the time, it was like a mixture because like the, the some raw and SmackDown talent was coming in the class too. Okay. We would do we would do a drill where we would have to like run the ropes and drop down, bypass, throw a line, drop down, bypass, throw a line. And I was like, damn, this guy's fast. And I was like, I'm fast too. So um, it was kind of fun to like test myself with his level of speed and like how fast you can get up and move out the way and stuff like that. So yeah, that was, it was cool. How'd you feel about the NXT 2.0 rebrand and then going back to like a less NXT 2.0? <laughs> like did that phase you at all? Or were you just doing focusing on you and what you were working on? I was focused on myself. The only thing changed yeah. was the colors. Fair enough, fair enough. That's true. Yeah. That it was just, it, only, yeah. It was the same all thing with like 205. Yeah, the same thing yeah. with like 205 and level up. Like nothing changed. So like when I first got in 205, I'm 250 pounds. And then <laughs> so like once I studied 205 a little more, it was like all the cruiser rate cru- uh, cruiser yeah. rates. And then I remember seeing after I wrestled me, I was like, oh, since when is 205 250 live? Yeah. And I was like, what are they talking about now? Went back and watched. I was like, oh, everyone on 205 live is under 205 pounds, whatever. So and then it's just the same. It's the same show, just a different name. You know, nothing yeah. for me. Nothing. That's nothing more, change. For sure, for sure. How about NXT Underground? You got to wrestle on NXT Underground. Um, th- that experience, no ropes, just more of like a shoot style. They had talent, people around the ring. How do you feel about that? That was great. Um, we weren't given me and Eddie. I think Eddie was just getting there too, and I think I, I think I was his first big feud. And so he was just getting there. So I was really familiar with him. Hey, we talked and we're, we're, we're pretty close now. We hang out on the outside. And yeah. um, I, I kind of briefly knew what he did in Japan and stuff like that. So like planning the match, uh, we heard that we were going to do an underground match. And I guess I heard before that it didn't go over that well. You know, it wasn't the best back then, how they were doing yeah. it. Yeah. And so we had a lot on our plate. So we were like the guinea pigs of, you know, hopefully bringing it back. Mm-hmm. So. Really, they're like, "Yo, you got an underground match next week." And I was like, "What does that consist of?" <laughs> <They're> like, no. <laughs> I, I feel like, like they put you in a lot of situations, and then you had to go figure it out. And like, let me go study yeah. underground. <laughs> yeah. So we, uh, uh, we, I asked Sean, Sean Michaels. I was like, "Well, uh, what, what, what we got? Like, what are we doing in a few weeks?" He's like, "Yeah, we're gonna do a match with uh, no ropes." And I was like. All right. And then Eddie knew Eddie knew what it was. He was like, Oh yeah, it's like yeah. it's like blood sport, it's like this and that. And I was like, Okay, so it's basically like a fight. And then he was like, Yeah. So he he helped me out a lot with that one. We got the match and we had a producer and then we were like, What do you guys want in the match? And then he was like, We don't we don't know. Like, what do you got? And I was like, Bro, what do you mean what we got? You told us what, you told us what we're doing. We're like, we don't we don't know. And then yeah. he was like, we just want a good match, we want a good physical match. Everything has to be laid in there, you can't miss uh with your with anything. And I was like, all right, so me and Eddie, we, him and I, we planned that match. Like, everything that was in that match, we put that together because, like, we didn't have anything. We, didn't, we weren't yeah. told what they wanted. We weren't told. The only, only thing we knew was, 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 was the time. Like, we, yeah. like, yo, you got eight minutes. I was like, oh, we got eight minutes. I was like, well, can we get a little, like, a little more? Because I was like, you want to go out there fighting? No guidance. So I was like, I just watched like a bunch of UFC fights, just like how to incorporate them into, into a wrestling match. And then we came, we came to TV that Tuesday. They took the ropes down. Then, uh, like, what do you guys got? And I was like, 
all right, me and Eddie, we looked at each other like, we'll show you what we got. And then uh, they wanted to, I remember it was funny because like technically like a fight, you know, so like we didn't, you can't really talk about every punch you're going to be thrown, uh, every punch that's going to be thrown cause it's like a fight. Where we, if we, were, we were really getting into it. It's like, oh, the fight, which I would like call my punches or no, I'm yeah. going to throw my punches when I want to throw my punches. So like they wanted us to walk through it. And I looked at Eddie and I was like, bro, I can't walk through this. And then he got he he knew what I was talking about. I was like, I was like, what we're gonna walk through right now is not what we're gonna do on TV. So we we literally like during rehearsal, they had us like literally go through the match, like ding ding ding, literally step by step. And I was like, this feels weird. And and I don't think they were like, because the rehearsal it was weird. They were like they were like a little iffy about it because they wanted it to be good, but we also didn't have any guidance, and we were also being the guinea pigs for it to possibly bring it back. So if it sucked, and it did so if it doesn't come back so we thought of it as if they don't do another match after this we suck yeah so we thought about it like that so like we got to kill this walk through it and then we um it was crazy because that day we did a double taping so yeah. we started filming early and we were the last match because the ropes <clears throat> because they had to take the ropes down last and so um everything was stacked against us we li- we literally wrestled at like 11 o'clock at night That's and we insane. were there and we, we were there since 11 in the morning yeah and it was a long time and like there was so much stress on it like we, like we, we got to hit this like sean's given us an opportunity to bring this back like what, what better guys to have it you know my background and eddie's background was the perfect match for it and so like everyone was wrestling we were literally the last ones to go like literally last like 11 o'clock 11 15 and i asked um I asked one of the, the writers, and I was like, no, what time do we plan on going on? You know, because like, we had to both run through the show still. And then he's like, oh, yeah, around like 10, 15, 10, 15, 10 o'clock. And so I started warming up. So I really got the, the blood going and sweating and stuff like that. And then like, oh, yeah, you're not up for like another, you know, an hour or so. So I'm like, crap. So now I had a little a little dip in my um warm up. So I was like, all right. So I, I sat back down because I don't want my legs to be cooked before I went out there. We went out there, we did it. I think we, we killed it. And obviously we, we killed it well enough for it to be on a um a pay-per-view in Vegas. So uh I mean me and Eddie take great pride in you know bringing uh NXT Underground back. No, hundred percent. We saw Lola Vice and Addy just have one. Mm-hmm. Um they're they're bringing it back. I'm sure they'll bring it back again. But I yeah. thought it's a cool experience because they tried it on Raw years ago during the pandemic, did not pan out the way I think yeah. Shane McMahon and them wanted yeah. it to. And mm-hmm. then nobody's really complained about the ones in NXT. Everyone's like, I feel like everyone's like, oh, like it's cool down there. Like, yeah, it's well, they, they, yeah. Got, they got the right people to do it. Lola Vice and Shayna, you know, two fighters. So they pick, they got the right people to do it, which yeah. is like we got to like myself and Eddie. We didn't care about getting punched. We're like, yo, if we get we get hit, we're like, who cares? Like, we're fighters. Before. Yeah, they're like, did you guys lay it in harder on each other because you guys wanted to make yeah. sure this was good? Yeah, we laid it in pretty good. Obviously, we laid it in pretty safely, but there was like one scary moment when I he pitched the idea of me giving him a belly to belly off the onto the floor. Mm-hmm. He pitched it, and I was like, "Sure, you want to do that?" He's like, "Yeah, bro, I'm a wrestler. I'm I'm a wrestler, bro. I'm gonna do it." And I was like, "Hey, you want to do it? You can do it. I, I am telling you. I ain't telling." You. So uh, it was funny and also kind of scary um, when the spot came. It was like he was like about to finish me off, pull me up by my hair. And as he was pulling me up, and I was like, I whispered to him, I was like, get ready to go. Grabbed him, launched him. And all I hear was like a loud mm. of, his, of his, sweat, his sweaty body yeah. bumping, on, bumping on the mat. So I was like, and all he was, oh, I'm like, oh my God, is he dead? Is he not? Is he dead? He's oh. not. And then, yeah. um, so it was one of those things like I talked about before, having to like listen to the crowd and then listen to the ref. Like, I guess the, the referee ran down there and checked out him to make sure he was alive. And he came back to me. He's like, he's good. Go get him. I was like, all right, we're going. <laughs> That's intense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they they got great people uh, representing it on the day on the ground. So I'm happy sure. him and I, we brought that back. So hopefully like a few years down the road and like, oh, we're the underground called problem. Oh yeah, Eddie Thorpe and, you know, Damon Camp, they brought it back. Yeah. You know, you're a oh, great storyteller. I got to just say that. Like, yeah, I, I try. I'm there with these stories yeah, that you're telling. Uh, uh, I try, man. <laughs> 
Well, you I, mentioned I, earlier that you asked Shawn Michaels about the underground match, and I'm curious because his booking right now of NXT is getting a ton of attention. Were you there when Shawn's booking was at its height in NXT? Were, were you there when Shawn was booking the show like he is now? Yeah, I was there the whole time. The whole time? Oh, okay. Yeah, um, yeah. So like, even when I first signed there, it was uh, Shawn was running the show. Oh, okay. oh, Sean already. Okay. Yeah, so, Sean was already Sean was already running the show. Got you. Yeah. So, what are your thoughts on his booking overall? Because, like I said, right now it's like people are going crazy about it. I mean, obviously it's great. You know, they're getting the views and they're doing the they got the right people doing the right things. Yeah, so he's doing a great job, and the talent are representing the show. Everyone gets great training there, so I gotta give real high praise to like the coaches there, and, like the talent that come in, like the especially the NIL guys that are like willing to like learn. Okay. And put the ego, put the ego aside, and just like learn something new, and like want to deliver because like the show is hot. Like I pitched, like I mentioned before, you don't want to be on a hot show, and then you're the one, you're the only one out there dragging butt, you know? Yeah. So you don't, you don't want to be that guy. But big, big kudos to the coaches and the talent that want to work, and Deshaun for you know to get knowing the talent and where to put them, and then putting their strong points out there and also knowing their, their weak points, you know, putting them in the right spot and, you know, the crossover with TNA and stuff like that. Yeah. They're doing, they're, he's, doing, he's doing great. He's doing great. And the viewers show it. And the viewers show it, you know. Has he, did he ever give you any advice that really stuck with you, though? Like, did you ever walk back through the curtain and get one of those nods of, like, like, yeah. oh, you got this? Yeah. Yeah. So, I got it was, it was, it was always kind of rewarding because, like, you know, um, you know, with the, with the star that he is, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, you want to like impress the boss, you know, like anything, yeah. you, know, you got a desk job, you want to impress the boss. So like, it's, it's always great. I've got a few of them, get like a few hugs and a few smacks on the butt, you know, like great job and <laughs> stuff like that. So like, yeah. you know, you get a hug or a slap on the butt, like you're doing the right things. So I was like, all right, I got a few of those. Huh? We did good. Damon Kemp, how'd you come up with the name? How much were you involved with coming up with the name? How did that come about? So when we do it, um, if you're there for a few months, they'll give you a name. If not, you just gotta keep working. Uh, so yeah. they didn't, they don't give you the name. You gotta make it up. Yeah. So what I did was I I literally went on Google when I got the call that they started getting names. I went on Google. I typed in them. I literally typed in tough names for men, and then a bunch of names popped up. And then I just like wrote down like 20 names, and I did the same thing for last name. I was like cool last names, tough last names for guys. And then a bunch of came up, so I, like I had like the first name, last name list. Yeah. So I literally just was like the little thing you should do in like uh, preschool, draw the little, <laughs> draw the, the little lines. Uh, the lines, try to match them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like this sounds good together. <laughs> yeah. So I sent all those in, and then eventually it was between Diego or Damon, and I was like, oh, yeah. I don't look like a Diego. Oh, so I don't look like a Damon either, but Damon sounds cooler. So yeah, so I was like, I'll run with that one. And that's how I got my name. And that's how no, I got for sure, of, for sure. A lot of, oh, sorry. That's how a lot of them get their name, too. I know. It's just fascinating to me, too, because, like you said, like, oh, I don't sound like a Damon, but then you have to, like, it's so, like, you have to learn to get used to people calling you Damon or calling you Camp. And yeah. at first, you're probably, like, this thing, and you're probably, like, oh, are they calling me? Like, yeah. It doesn't and it was also kind of confusing, like, how to introduce yourself to new people. Yeah. yeah. Like, do I introduce myself, myself as Bobby or introduce myself as Damon? You see him out in public. <laughs> do I say Damon or Bobby? Uh, yeah, and then it's funny with the Damon Camp name. It was crazy because, like, at the time, I guess some dude in Florida, like, <laughs> I mur- was murdered. just gonna bring that yeah. up because when, <laughs> when YouTube Damon Camp does like a bunch of videos of this guy that was trying to plea insanity for murdering yeah. a bunch of people, and yeah. his name was Damon Camp. And I'm like, this is not the Damon Camp I'm looking for right now. <laughs> yeah, so like when I first started out and I had that first match on my 205 Live, and I was like looking on Twitter after it came out on Peacock. And then they're like, oh, this is Damon Camp. And there was some, like I said, like you said, some crazy dude in the in the <laughs> orange jacket. And I was like, oh, this ain't good. And then yeah. uh I went, I went to the one of the creative guys. I was like, yo, you know Damon Camp, there's a uh an insanity dude that murdered two people. The same last name. And he was like, Yeah. And I was like, uh, should we change it? And they said, No, no, it ain't, it ain't I'm sorry, it ain't a big deal. I'm like, what do you mean it's a big deal? You you Google Damon Camp and then you see everyone's dude's mugshot. So I was like, all right. So I just ran with it then. So <laughs> yeah. does it do you do, do you look back and kind of wish you got to work with your brother a little bit more in WYU as a yeah. both there? Or was there any yeah. talks about that happening? Like what was the story there? So uh it was weird. Um he was doing he was doing his thing his thing with uh amateur wrestling, got off the Olympics and stuff like that. 
And then like, I wanted to keep my last name. I was like, why not keep my last name? He's literally in the business with me. You know, it looks just like me. Like, why would it be, yeah. why would it be differentiate at all? And then they're like, oh, yeah, eventually you know, we'll get to something where you guys get to do this and do that. And then um, it was also really funny when he had he helped out. They had him help Eddie Thorpe out. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, I was like, um, I don't know, I, I just thought it was like comedy kind of uh, in a way. Because I was <laughs> like, uh, I found out that he was going to help him out because he knew me really well. And then, but he wasn't, but we weren't related. Yeah. So I asked him, I was like, yo, you know, people are going to know if you, you look alike. So I was like, I was just thinking in my back of my head, is it going to eventually lead to something? Because I lose to Eddie, do I eventually get to wrestle my brother? But it was, I felt like that match was also, you know, you can go, you can go back and look on Twitter. Briscoe, you know, Gerald Briscoe tweeted it um, like three years ago. He, and there was like a thing with the Creeds. He was like, this is the match that we're going to see at WrestleMania, the Stevesons versus the Creeds. Ooh. And I was like, and then he, he, he I, I still have the tweet saved. Great dude also more stories with him and then um i was like why are we doing this it's just like kind of weird and kind of comedy-ish you know and then the match was i think if we would have wrestled in nxt i think i think a match like that would have been a match we were told like if you, if you guys ever wrestled it would be at wrestlemania and we were, yeah. we were we were literally told that like if you guys ever wrestle it would be a wrestlemania match and then i was like okay so you know you know maybe five ten years down the road we i wrestle my brother at WrestleMania. So I was like, you know, I'm just thinking at the time, thinking of the what ifs. And then, so we actually, we were in the same class a lot. And we got to work with each other. And we flowed so well. Like, I, you know, we're brothers. So we know each, we know how we, how we move. Yeah. We know how to grapple with one another. We're all legit. So we flowed really well in, in the ring with one another. And then um, I was like, eventually I just got to the point where I was like, all right, it's just the name, you know, the name they can change and you can get called up to raw and they can just change your name you know yeah 100 or you can become damon kemp stevenson <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah yeah so there was like there was like brief talks of like us like teaming up but it was just like everyone had their own was going their own route and stuff like that so i wish we wrestled each other on house shows yeah. and we, there was one time we wrestled each other in a six man it was me and my group versus gable and the creeds and we did that in it was one of the bigger house shows. We had like 700 people there. And it was funny because like everyone knew we were, we were related. Like we didn't have to tell them. Like yeah. I, I would be, I would well, be the, on the, the, the internet knew too. Like we were always yeah. under the impression, <laughs> right? Like, so yeah, it was funny. So like we would go, I would go out there. I'd be standing on the apron and I'm, I'm, I'm literally reading everyone's list. Like, oh, that's his brother. That's their brother. Yeah. That's their yeah. brother's brothers. And I was reading their lips. So we would always do a thing where like we were the healing. So I would always be the one taking the butt whooping and he would be the one giving me it, like to give me the comeback. And then, so we would always do something creative where like I would only beat him up if he was down or like I take advantage of him and I hurry up and run and tag out. Mm -hmm. And then we did that a few times in the house shows. Everyone, we had that place booming pretty, pretty hot. So I'll come in, boom, 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 hurry up, run to my corner, tag out, he'll get up. He was like, you mother, like, like I want to get you. And then we would always put it, we would always put the matches to where I would be like the last, like the comeback starts or whatever, um, throw, throw, um, miles came over to me and then I would be like, I'll like jump, I'll like back up. Like don't tag me, yeah. don't tag me. And then he, he was like, like being heels. You're like, he was like, screw this tag. Yeah. And then everyone was like, ah, and then they had Gable come over and, and deal me over the top rope and then just beat me up and the place was going insane. So I was like, there's definitely, there was like money there that hopefully we get to circle back to it one day, but there was definitely money there. Like 700 people. Yeah. But like they already yeah. knew and they like, they were already, we were already getting the reaction and we played it's it perfectly. Like, it's like, they know, and they know it's going to come out. So like eventually I think it's like Braun Breaker's Braun Breaker and everyone was angry about that. But then when Braun started going after the world title, there was Rick Steiner in the crowd and we're addressing that's his dad. So yeah. it's like eventually they get there where they're going to address it when it's, no, yeah. it's, it's insane. Is it like we saw your brother, right? We saw him have WrestleMania moments. We saw him do the stuff with Kurt Angle. Mm -hmm. Is there a reason why he wasn't an NXT and you wore? Like, is it because he was a gold medalist? Like, it had the, like it, it was just, I'm just curious. Cause like, <laughs> even having you guys there together in NXT against the Creed brothers could have been a thing right off the bat, right? Like, why was that? Would, the that, would have been hot, that, would, that, that match would have cooked. 
after yeah. we, we got to wrestle against them. But I, I don't know why. I don't know why they did right. We were in different brands. I don't know if they wanted to keep us keep us separated that bad badly or what. I was like, dude, you can't hide it. We're like, we're both. We were well known before we even came here. So I was just like, and now we're even more known that we're here. So I was just like, yeah. I don't know if it was like the easy way. I don't know. I don't know if they were trying to stay away from just like it's an easy. It's a it's an easy thing to do, but like, why not kind of like build them both up? So then eventually they do get to the bigger stage. Then you kind of merge them together. I don't know if they were waiting yeah. for that, but no, it would have been, yeah, I'm not sure why we were on separate brands. You know, it's like they know. had these plans for him <laughs> when he came in with this hype, mm-hmm. but like we saw you a lot more than we saw him. Yeah. Right? yeah Which so. is, it's like, it's like if they had plans for him, it's like, it would have been cool if you guys were doing it at the same time. Cause you know, like I feel like if I look back at WWE in the last years personally, I'm like, I'm gonna remember you a lot more. I'm like, oh yeah, Gable popped up a few times. Mm-hmm. Like he popped yeah. up at WrestleMania. Oh, he did that thing with Kurt Angle that was cool. But it's like yeah. Damian Camp, like you had storylines and matches and blow offs, and yeah. you were part of a couple of different factions. It's almost yeah. like, oh man, it sucks I didn't work with him the same way, you know? Yeah, it's unfortunate. Uh, I think everything happens for a reason. Um, I think we both left on great terms. I think hopefully yeah. we left the door open. You know, like I'll, if they call me tomorrow, I'll, I'll show right up the TV, show up to practice. You know, there's, yeah. there's, there was no hard feelings. I get the business. Like everyone, I was, I was pretty mad and upset. Like, but everyone's gonna be mad and upset when you get like not resigned to your job, especially when things are going great. So it's like I was upset, but it was like also just like, all right, like thankful I got to like, you know, build a name for myself and within WWE, so people know me on the outside. But it also sucks that I'm not there right now. Oh, yeah man. let's clarify that then so like you weren't released or anything like that your contract expired and just it, there was no negotiation to resign or anything correct yeah no and it was it was getting weird i i, I personally i knew my timeline yeah but i'm sure they did too but it wasn't expressed so it was just like a lot of weird things were happening which like i was always causing the group to like lose or something weird but it was always my fault yeah and i was starting to think i was like oh what are we doing here? So I was like, okay, yeah, like I see what's going on. And I, and obviously they see what's going on. And then they had like the, uh, the, the guys go to TNA for the TNA pr- taping. And I wasn't yeah. part of it. I wasn't a part of the text, the text group. Yeah. And I was like, uh, okay. You know, trying to stay positive. So I had a few talks with, uh, some people. I was like, oh, am I in the group? I'm out of the group. And so I know they're going to the TNA, but like I'm staying here. I wasn't involved or told in any way shape or form that it's nothing to worry about but like in my head it's like it's nothing to worry about <laughs> yeah. and then because I could like I said I knew my timeline and they went over and then they did their thing over there and then like we rewind a little bit to my talk and I was like am I still in the group and then oh yeah you're in the group you know everything's going great we're happy like we're in the kitchen story eventually you guys are gonna win the heritage cutback which they just did and we're gonna have a bunch of stuff going because like what we were doing a little bit we were Miles, uh, Miles Warren, he's like, he's deaf. <clears throat> so yeah. we, we, and he, he loves having fun too, like with the hearing thing. And, uh, great dude. He's one, he's one, he's a great, good friend of mine. So he, he, he didn't mind having fun with the hearing. So he, a lot of times he would pitch to like, be like, what, what, like, what'd you say? <laughs> a lot of that stuff that was said. Yeah. And then, so he was the one that really put, put that he was fun with having the hearing thing. So eventually it was just going to be like a thing where like, I'm upset. I'm like, yo, you guys with the TNA? Like, look, why why did you guys leave me out? La, la, la. And then um, there was going to be something where, like, oh, Miles didn't tell you? And then, because he's deaf. He didn't hear it. Yeah. He, didn't, he didn't give me my itinerary. <laughs> yeah. So that was, like, that's what I was told. And then going, and then um, I wanted to renegotiate, but, like, the pay-per-view was going on that week, and I didn't want to bother anyone, you know, because they were focused on their stuff. And that's probably the last thing they want to talk about why they're focused, focused on the PLE. And then uh, they're like, yo, just talk to this guy. He'll point you in the right direction. And I was like, yo, my contract's up next month. Like, I'd like to be here. I'd like to stay. I don't want to go anywhere. I feel like we're doing great stuff. I feel like from what I was being told, everyone was happy with my rest- with my wrestling performance and everything. And then um, like, yo, talk to this guy. And I was waiting to talk to him on Monday. <clears throat> Person didn't come in, whatever. And then um, I got a call that Monday night that they just said they didn't want to resign me. And I thought that the call was going to be for the resign. So like, I got a little bit excited. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm going to do another three years and get a little bit of money, you know, and whatever, whatever. And uh, they're like, oh, unfortunately, we don't. We chose not to resign you. And I was like, bro, what? Like, I just, yeah. you know, like the talk last week and then I'm like, 
I was like kind of like stuck for a second. I was like, you sure you call the right person? Yeah. I'm like, you know, like, you sure you, you're I'm the right person you're calling or, or whatever? And then I was like taken back and I was like, all right, that's done. So, uh, yeah, that was tough. But um, I guess it is what did, it is. Did they give you a reason at all? No, I, I had. I didn't get any reason. Like I had no reason. Like I, I was literally supposed to be booked. I had so we we have like an app. It's called this talent relations app. Yeah. And it just it just notifies you when you're on TV, <clears throat> or you need it for like bookings or like whatever whatever crap. And then um I had a doc to to be on TV that Tuesday. So then when they said that I'm not going to be resigned, like they're like we're just going to let your contract be um run out for the next thirty days, and then um. I was like, I was stuck too because they didn't tell me why. And then I was like, also booked for TV. I was like, do I show up for TV even though I'm not being resigned or yeah. I'm new to this too? I didn't hear really much info. So like one of my friends, he was just texting me and like, like, you know, am I needed? Am I on the script or like, am I part of something? Because I'll, I'll come, you know, because like technically I was still in the contract for 30 days. And I didn't want to like, mm. to like mess with that, to mess with anything yeah. like that. And then they, they, I guess they didn't really know anything until like it got dark out that they were like hey we're gonna write them we're, we're, we're writing write me off the show by throwing me in the trunk yeah and i was like all right that's it you know uh, but like part yeah. of me thinks like if i would have like if like if i didn't say anything would they just like have like worked me for like 30 days and like on the last day like hey yeah so, like yeah. if you showed up yeah. right and then was like oh yeah. i'll schedule some here like yeah <laughs> maybe they would have physically thrown you in the trunk because that whole segment was the no quarter catch crew standing by yeah. the trunk yeah, and like so you know, like, and Ren Sinclair being like, she didn't know, she, I didn't see nothing, and then yeah, put out that funny tweet about Miles put the AC on for you, but yeah, <laughs> that was yeah. So I was like, uh, all right, so that journey's done, I guess. So yeah, yeah, you know, it was a hard pill to swallow, but I guess we move forward. Hey yo, have you guys heard about Five Hundred Level? They make officially licensed WWE merchandise, and I actually have been working with them on a couple of designs. A design that I worked on recently was with a girl named Caitlin, who's a big Dakota Kai fan, and we designed this new Dakota Kai shirt, which you can get exclusively now at Five Hundred Level. Once again, officially licensed with the WWE. Really wanted a new Dakota Kai shirt. Got this one. Um, designed and made, and it's on the website now, on sale now, 500level.com. Guys, join their uh, partnership program. You get discounts. The more shirts you buy, 10%, 20%, 30%, you earn points, and you get a discount. They have OG shirts, guys. I have to re-up on my NWO shirts on 500 level, the comfortable material. If you get the premium shirts, but even the non-premium is super comfortable. I got NWO shirts. They got Shawn Michaels shirts. You can find some of your favorite wrestlers on there. You can find none other than guys like Razor Ramon, the bad guy. Check out this shirt. It's a sweet, sweet shirt, everybody. 500level.com. Uh, like I said, they have the NWO stuff. And if you're like a big NXT fan, they got shirts for all of your favorite NXT wrestlers. And if they don't, let me know and I'll make sure we get some shirts made for your favorite NXT wrestler. I want to go support my girl, Carmen Petrovic. You guys can check out our co casual conversation on my YouTube channel. You can check out mine and Carmen Petrovic's casual conversation. But 500 level, I had a Carmen Petrovic shirt. I had to go support my fellow Canadian and the homie Carmen Petrovic. Of it, guys. 500level.com, guys. Check them out. Get premium, officially licensed WWE shirts. You cannot find a WWE shop all the time. They have a huge selection on their website also for MLB, NBA, NFL, NHL. They got shirts for everything, but their wrestling selection is insane. Custom creative designs. Maybe I can uh, work together with someone out there that is an editor that wants to put more designs on the website. Hit me up. 500level.com. Check them out and keep doing the thing. I feel like that journey is definitely far from done in the wrestling business overall, though. Have you <sighs> have any um, like short term goals that are on your radar? Yes, yeah, so I like to wrestle. I like to continue wrestling. Um, so I just got my new gear. So like, oh, I had all my Damon Damon Kemp stuff. So obviously, yeah. I can't use that. I can't use that name anymore. And right. obviously, I didn't have any backup Bobby Steens and stuff because I wasn't planning <laughs> on being let go. Yeah. Either. So like, yeah. I had to wait for my new gear to get here, which will get here this week now, finally. So like I had a few, I had like three bookings back to back to back with a pretty big company. And I, and I just had to say, I was like, yo, like I, my, my, my new gear is not here yet. I wasn't planning on getting let go. I don't, I'm not going to show up to your show wearing my Damon Kemp stuff. Like I can't do that anyways, but they, they own the name, whatever. And also like, I'm not Damon Kemp anymore. Like I don't, I'm not, I'm not with the company anymore. Yeah. So I was like, hey, I can't I can't do the shows until I get my new gear. Which it's kind of sucked because like there were there were 
it was a pretty high um, high profile show, so it was like it kind of like I wouldn't say it killed killed my steam a little bit, or like people are probably thinking, oh, he can't get a booking or stuff like that. And it's like, no, I had booking. Like my email was flooded with bookings and and whatnot and like everything. It was just like I had to wait for my new gear because like I don't want to be disrespectful to like showing up to someone else's stuff, you know, not prepared. So I had to tell yeah. him, I was like, hey, I'm sorry, I don't have any gear. I, I can't, I can't do those shows. And then, you know, obviously, um, I'm still new to the indie shows. I guess they book their shows like three months in advance, a few months yeah. in advance, just so they're, just so they got their ducks in a row. So I was like, all right, that steam's gone. Cause that would have been pretty hot, you know, like coming off of this and then going right to that. So I was like, all right, but no, I got a lot of, a lot of things going. So I just signed with a talent agency. Here in Florida, uh, I got a talent agent that gets me, you know, bookings on TV shows, commercials, movies. Oh, um, <clears throat> I just did two reads uh, for a movie for two separate Let's movies. Um, I'm being, um, I'm, I got to do one more audition, so I made, I made like the final audition to be an NCAA commercial. Um, so there, there's stuff going, you know, and I and I look to open up my um, my own wrestling club, amateur wrestling here in Florida. Yeah. So I'm teaming up, teaming up with a high school. Cause like in, in uh, Minnesota, I had a club going, the Stevenson Wrestling Academy. I had a good kid, good amount of kids going there. So I was like, and I know, I know a few wrestler, amateur wrestlers down here, and their dad, kids, and their parents, and stuff like that. And they got a lot of kids. And they want me to come in. So I was like, why not? You know, just like start my own club. You know, and it's gonna, I'm, it's gonna be pretty legit. I'm telling you that right now, it's gonna be legit. Yeah. So and, I, and that's another thing I want to do. Another thing I want to do is like, cause like when you're amateur wrestling, like your movements in the ring looks so different from everyone else. Like you watch Kurt Angle, you know, or myself or like all the other wrestlers, like actually grapple and roll on the ground. It looks legit. Like you can, yeah. you can actually see the technical stuff. Like we're actually moving. We're just not, you know, flipping and rolling around. Everything looks like legit. the movements are legit. So like what I want to do is open it up to pro wrestlers too. If pro wrestlers want to come in for an hour, you know, learn how to make their movements in the ring look legit. You know, even if, or even if they want a little self defense, like how to like actually grab someone, or how to you know pick someone up, slam them down, or the, the technical stuff that they can do, you know, in the ring that will that, that will separate them from everyone else. You know, yeah. but I'm I'll open up to that to them. I'll have all the high school kids there, all of the, the little kids in the area. So, um, you know, it, it, there's stuff going. You know, I got a um, me and my boy Ethan Carl. We got I'm a big country music fan. Okay. And I do a little music here and there. I dabble in it. So like I, I decided him and I talked about it for a while. You can spot, look him up, look him up on Spotify. Um, we got a country song coming out in the next, like hopefully in the next month. That's pretty legit. We recorded that in Minnesota. So uh, th there's stuff coming, but it's just like now my new gear's here finally. So now I can, I'm ready to scrap. So i you know, I'm ready to go. But I also got like a lot of other things going. So that, which I'm thankful for. So it's just like one door, like I said, before, yeah. one door closes, the other one opens. And we just keep moving forward. And then who knows, maybe you get a call back and you go do that thing. So you got the wrestling gym and then you got, you got WWE going. So then you just build the brand up even more. Yeah. No, a hundred percent. Super busy. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. And There's hopefully a ton I get going on there. Yeah. So I, hopefully I get these, these roles. I already did the auditions for them. I already submitted them. So my talent agent, she's doing a great job. So I literally signed with her <clears throat> right when my contract expired. She signed me on the spot, which I was really thankful for. Uh, like two days later, I had emails of like, "Yo, that's awesome. you need to audition this for this for this for this," and I was like, "Okay." So I had to get all the fancy <laughs> little lighting and stuff like that yeah. and do that. And so, so hopefully, I'm just not on the TV taking bumps. So I'm in a good, uh, pretty good role. <laughs> you got to you got to do those uh, self tapes where you're standing. Yeah, I did the self tapes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got to do self tapes. I had, I got to get. I had to get my nice my my uh my nice ring light. I had to go get the little yeah, professional yeah, headshots yeah. And, and stuff like that. Yeah. So but that's. It, it, that's cool. You got acting, yeah. you got some, you know, training uh, younger kids with wrestling, amateur wrestling stuff. And it's true, like a lot of wrestlers go out and they do stuff in different MMA, mixed martial arts to kind of bring that to wrestling. And you can help them learn that amateur wrestling style. You got the music stuff. You got the independence to hit up. I think I think there's a lot to look forward to, you know? Yeah, so it's just a, it's just a, a, tie, a waiting thing right now. So yeah, but, but, but once but, everything gets going, it's going to hit. Yeah, I know for sure. And uh, hopefully that opportunity comes back around with the independent companies. And to be honest with you, like if people didn't know, they didn't know. So when you do show up, it's still like, you know, 
Yeah. Like, oh crap, yeah. he's back in wrestling. You know what I mean? It's always mm-hmm. bigger to you than it is to the rest of the audience out there because they don't know. Right? But like, yeah, yeah. To you, you're like, damn, this could have been a thing. But you know, when it happens, it'll happen. I mm-hmm. mean, you didn't have to worry about that situation of waiting three months like a lot of people do when they yeah. get released and stuff, right? Like your contract expired. You were free to go as soon as you like. So that's also like a cool part about it as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm now just curious. We're going to wrap this up really soon here but you brought it up like what's on your playlist like what's like the top five country songs right now that you think people should know about? I'm, oh man like so, who are you listening to like who are you listening to hey so like you know like girls love taylor swift yeah, yeah. i'm like that with morgan wallen i was about no to say morgan wallen yeah hey i saw hey i tell you what man i saw him last year yeah you know after you know after you uh get the party going a little bit and you get you hear i hear his music man I, it was funny because um, it was like a year and a half ago. It was in Tampa. You know, you know that little outside dome? I, I don't know mm-hmm. if you know. But it's like a little Tampa. It's like, it's like an outside thing. I'm, no joke. I was standing on top of the chair. Like like standing on the uh, Like where you're supposed to sit. I was yeah. standing on it. And I was singing every word. <laughs> I knew every song. Like, oh, man. I, yeah. I, I, I almost brought me to tears. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, so like how girls are. With Morgan Wallen, uh, with uh, Taylor Swift, with Taylor. Yeah. I'm with Morgan Wallen. He's selling no, out no, the no. same stadiums. I mean, he was in MetLife and he packed it like not too yeah. long ago in August. I so think. he's packing a bit. I was supposed to see him last month with uh, yeah. when he was here in Jelly Roll. He did the first night and then the second night. I don't know what happened. I don't know what happened, but I was upset. Like we were, we drove down to Tampa. We were like getting ready to park. I don't know, cooler chill, you know, we got the food going, and then he puts the tweet out, he can't, he feels sick. And yeah. I was like, bro, <laughs> like, I had, I was bumping Morgan Wallen all the way here, I had my speakers turned all the way up, got my boots on, jeans on, you know, I'm all cowboyed up, you know, <laughs> I was like, uh, no, but, um, yeah, Morgan Wallen's my top, you know, I like, I like Machine Gun Kelly, just how versatile he is, I love his punk, his punk stuff, his rap stuff, yeah. I love what he's doing right now, and I'm a big fan of Jelly Roll, yeah. um, got to hang out with him a few times great person like real genuine so like, like the first time i got to meet him he literally like came in he sat down we just talked before he went out yeah and then i seen him a few more times so we got like a nice little relationship going and then a uh, great dude him, him and his whole that whole crew like his whole band the band members are all all great people you know Cole wetzel on the field Wetzel, he's a country guy you know, out of texas you know i park mccollum now, I'm probably naming people you guys don't know, but Luke Holmes. I mean, Luke Holmes. yeah, no, Luke, Luke Holmes. Holmes you gotta know yeah. Luke Holmes. Yeah. So I, I, I grew up in old school country, like the old Tim McGraw, Big and Rich, and all that type of stuff when I was younger, right? And I go through phases yeah. of music. I listen to everything, right? So mm-hmm. classic rock, rock, Punjabi yeah. music, Bollywood, pop, everything. But recently, I started getting back to country. Like I like Zach Bryan a lot. I'm a big Zach oh, Bryan yeah. fan. We think he's been dropping. I just been. If I relate to it, then I'll roll with it. It's like he's a good late night drive listening. When yeah. you had a home type of guy, um, yeah. I, was, no, I know. I, I wanted to see him when I was in Minnesota, but I looked up those yeah. tickets. And I was like, "Damn, dude!" It was like five. That's what I was about to say. <laughs> That's what I was about to say about Morgan Wallen because obviously I've listened to Morgan Wallen quite a bit too now, and I've caught on to like what he's been doing and like. I remember he came to Vancouver, and this place is expensive as it is already. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, he came to Vancouver, and I was one of those guys looking for like last minute tickets, and I was like, "Oh n- no!" Dude, <laughs> like, you gotta buy, you gotta buy those like yeah. a year. And, you gotta buy those like a year and a half advance. But they, yeah, because one they yeah. were like sold out, and then I was looking at like the second like scalper sides and stuff. I'm like, "Oh, this yeah. isn't opening." Right? So I was like real thankful because uh, no, I love Jelly Roll's music. I love all of it. It just yeah. so happened he was he was performing the same night as Morgan Wallen. And so I'm I'm good with his 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 team. So like they hook it, they hook me up and they treat me really well. And they're just his whole the whole general crew crew. They're all great people. So they 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 hook me up and stuff like that. So like thankfully I didn't have to like you know put out for the eight hundred dollar ticket. You know. Yeah. So. <laughs> No, it's but insane. It's they're insane. all great people, man. Yeah. No, that's that's dope. That's cool. It's a cool little thing to know, right? Because you don't get to see that side when you're wrestling in NXT. That you're like a big country music fan. Oh, they're <laughs> huge. Huge. So like hopefully like when my me and my boy we drop we drop this. Hopefully it gets some traction. You know, like obviously it, it's not gonna suck. It's gonna be good. So I'm uh it'll be good. So like hopefully the, the plan is just to build that, you know, then eventually, you know, like who who wouldn't want to be a country music star? Yeah. So yeah. it's just like the connections that I do have, you know, like obviously if it's good, you know, 
they'll hear it, you know, and hopefully they hear it and they like it. So like the in a perfect world, like everything, music's great. And then you get an email or a text like, hey, you want to come on tour for me or open for me or something like that? So like, you you know, fingers crossed for that, you know. Yeah. So, you, gotta, you know, but you got to have good music be, being able to do that, be able to, to, to yeah. play for, to open for the top dogs, you know. Right. Yeah. You got to be optimistic and manifest that stuff. And I think it's yeah. cool. Like, I uh, I always said that I, to, about Chris Jericho. I'm like, you know, if you read his books and stuff, he's a kid that I grew up and you want to be two things. You want to be a professional wrestler and you want to be a rock star. And in his own weird, wacky way, he ended up doing both. Yeah. <laughs> That's so so it, that it's be, weird. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's weird because, like, like, I don't know, you're, you ever go somewhere, like, or you, go to, you go to a performance or something and then, like, or like you see something on TV or you play a video game or you do something yeah. like you, you like feel in your heart a little bit like, man, like I, like I can feel, I feel myself. I, I, I know I can be on that stage in front of the, the 15,000, 20,000, or if you do the stage of 90,000 people, it's like, so when I get an opportunity to like go on the stage and like watch, watch, I call my friends, watch my friends perform. It's like, Damn, like I like it's like one of those things. I don't get all like all emotional or soft or whatnot. No, like for one of those sure. Things, like how you feel, like man, I can do this. Like I feel I can do that. To put the time in. Like, I can be the guy to be in front of there and like having people. You know how I I'm like Morgan Wallen. You know, twenty years. You're making old, people feel. Fan, yeah, yeah, not fanboying in the crowd. You know, I can make someone. Hopefully, I get the opportunity to make someone fanboy over me. You know, or fan girl over me or over my music. You know, so it's a it's yeah. a it's a cool little thing. So I don't know. Before we change the subject and wrap this up really quickly, then do you play any instruments? No, I suck. <laughs> oh, okay. But you can sing. I can sing. Yeah, oh, okay. I can sing. So um, I try to play the guitar. I just don't have the patience for it. One of my friends, yeah. he's great at guitar. I'm like talking like, I'm like, yo, play this, put the phone up. And he's like, <laughs> I'm like, how do you do that? And I'm like, <laughs> and he, he tried to teach me. So I took, I don't even call them lessons. So I took lessons for like two days. And I was like, dude, my <laughs> fingers in this strumming, it, it, it ain't working. So I was like, all right, I got to rely on the vocal cords. So like, it's funny. I had drums when I was younger. So like, yeah. I, I, I was a big fan of like Slipknot, Linkin Park, Corn, oh, Disturbed, oh. Um, Godsmack, yeah. Um, yeah. all those heavy bands back then. And like Green Day, like Blink-18, all the all Blink-182, yeah, 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 yeah. all the punk dudes. So like what I would do is yeah. my parents bought me a drum set because I guess they got tired of me going into their uh cabinet and taking like i would my my, my main drumsticks at the time were two um butter knives so yeah. I, I like hit, hit the butter knives on the pots and pans and eventually like i started like cutting myself right here yeah like, i was yeah, hold yeah, the butter yeah. knife side here and try to drum and then i remember coming home one day my brother always got home before me because we, he was in elementary school my parents had the window open and i remember my brother hitting the drums and i was like oh yeah. i know that sound i came my parents told me a drum set so i was always put like I had the big, obnoxious Beats headphones, like the biggest, <laughs> most expensive ones you can have. And I was yeah. hooking up to my, um, hooking up to my phone, turn it all the way up, and I was like listening to the drums, and I just, I just go along to it. That's dope. That's yeah. dope. And I think that's true though. Like I, I remember, like I've always kind of wanted to learn guitar, and maybe I'm just making an excuse for myself. But I feel like you got to oh. start. I think, I think you got to start young. I think yeah. you start young. Like your fingers get more like ready like, for it. Like it just. It's, yeah, like, when you start getting older, it's harder. I feel like it's not natural. It's. it's I don't think some people just have it right, and some don't. Yeah. Like some people are born with that talent for sure. Yeah. Like uh, yeah. I don't keep going. But Luke Holmes, he did that. Like he played par- guitar for like two years. Two or three years, and then he dropped all that music, and he's a huge hit now. I'm like, how does he just pick up the guitar and go? Like, yeah. So, like I said, some people have it, some people don't. I don't got genetics. Got genetics is something I'm making. All, I'm making all the excuses because I never learned. Yeah. Um, <laughs> last but not least, <laughs> I like to ask everybody this. I know you're still like in like the beginning stages of your long, long journey that we have ahead of us. But do you feel like if you look back and talk to younger Bobby Stevenson, do you feel like you made your younger self proud? Yeah. I feel like I was always the underdog in a lot of things. You know, I felt like uh, being the underdog and always having like the crazy things stacked up against me to not be successful, but having to be resilient enough to push through to be successful. So that's, that's kind of like my my little thing. Well, this WWE being thrown in the deep end and having to, you got no choice but to do it, you know, or even then, you know, I was always a sick baby growing up too. Like I had bad hearing. I was born, uh, it was like I was hearing underwater. You know, I didn't have, yeah. I didn't have tear ducts in my eye, so I didn't have surgery for that. You know, I had 
bunch of little health things when I was a baby. None, none now, but it was like I was always like everything was always stacked up against me. Yeah. So now it's like now being in between things, like everything stacked up against me again. So it's like, all right, now I gotta, you know, it's it's some some days are better than better. Some days are better than others. Just being focused and having to refocus and having the motivation just to like get up. Like you don't have nothing. As it seems right now, it doesn't look like you're working towards anything, but you actually are in the yeah. long run, even though like things aren't happening like the, the every day. So it's just like having that motivation to like get up and like, yo, you got to go to the gym. You got to do this. You got a podcast, you know, even though you didn't get a text today about, you know, you're, you're another booking or something like that. You get, no, you just got to keep moving forward keep putting yourself out there. So it's just another thing that now that I'm older, it's like, it's an adult thing being stacked against me now. So yeah. uh, just got to stay focused and, you know, I got to keep going. I can't stop, you know? Yeah. Life comes with adversities, whether you want them or not. And it's like, yeah. The older you get, I feel like you realize, like, oh, like, oh, work out. It's just sometimes things take time. And I yeah. think I always talk about this with a lot of people, uh, especially to the younger generation. If you're watching this, this is like people always see people's uh, like the part of the journey where they're already successful. Mm -hmm. But they don't realize for a lot of these people, they were grinding for six years, seven years, 10 years to get to that place. Yeah. And then they never, they never, you know, like they never put in that, like, they never look at that aspect and then it's like they have this sort of entitlement they want this instant gratification it's like no nah, you gotta wait you gotta go through the mm. adversity you gotta go through yeah. the ups and the downs and you know you hit a couple of home runs along the way that's, yeah. that's the way it yeah. works you know that's and then when you hit a couple man. of home runs you can't stop you gotta keep going right you can't yeah. rest on that so it's like it's, it's, it's you the pretty, they see the pretty, they definitely see, only see the pretty things in life but yeah i see the grind so <laughs> yeah well thank you so much for coming on i really do appreciate it jonah do you have any last questions or anything that you want to ask or no i mean that was uh you summed it up really well there bobby honestly that's it's really inspirational yeah and also you were just saying justin i mean it's all about that grind to get there i think it makes us all stronger too when we reach that finish line so mm. it's really good yeah. i appreciate it oh, I, I did appreciate have one it. thing bobby does the song have a name that you and your friend are releasing or you don't you don't want to release it yet oh not yet okay not yet. so we already got we already got our like our cover photo going. And, okay. Uh, nice. I'm not. This is gonna be legit. This ain't gonna be like no Spotify. I'm not gonna be no <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. SoundCloud. This ain't gonna be yeah, no yeah. SoundCloud. Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah. Release, so, like, I'll get. I'll. I'll tease my. Um. I'll tease. I, I'm gonna. I had a Spotify before because I had a song previously that I put out just for fun. It's called Ain't Gone. Mm. You look it up on YouTube. It's it's still up. And so I, I had that on my on my spotify and i had a whole spotify like legit spotify going but i wasn't putting music out so i was like all right i'll just delete it so now i'm gonna put it back up make everything legit again so i'll, te I'll tease that when the time comes nice um sooner than later but i can't wait yeah. to hear it I, no, I appreciate it i appreciate it yeah appreciate for sure it. and let me know like I'm, I'm more than happy to help promote it and share it on my uh socials and get the word out there if you want me to um, oh yeah I'm, that all being said that you've obviously changed some of your socials so where can people find you now uh, I find me on um, Instagram. No, the Damon Camp name. It's it's like a lot being changed. Yeah, it takes time. All, this process, like yeah, yeah. Everything so, has to be reviewed and approved <laughs> and everything. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, um, <laughs> uh, Instagram. Uh, you want to watch me sing, cook? You know, food reviews. Go to state fair concerts. Get ready <laughs> with me. All that other crap. Um, same thing with my um, my Twitter. You know, I, I'm starting to tweet a little more, just to have a little bit more fun and interaction and stuff like that. And then uh, same thing, Bobby Stevenson. Same thing with my TikTok. I post a lot of stuff on my TikTok. And um, but I will not dance on my TikTok. You know, I'll do all the cooking, so I ain't doing no dancing. Not even to your own but song. I'll, I'll do some dancing to my song, my own song. But if my song yeah. is not out yet, and you see me dancing on there, uh, <laughs> playing my girlfriend, yeah. making me dance. Uh, yeah. And then same thing with um, um, yeah, pretty much Instagram, TikTok, Twitter. You know, hit me up on all those. You know, follow along. You know. Hope you like what you see. Sweet. And oh, Thank YouTube, you. YouTube. I just made my YouTube, so yeah, get that. Oh, sick. <laughs> okay, so it's, what is a YouTube under Bobby Stevenson? Yeah, everything's under Bobby Stevenson. So yeah. I'm just, you know, gotta get the content going. So it, it, it's there. It's gotta get edited. Uh, sweet everyone guys go check out all that go follow him on all his socials guys go follow jonah over here we run recap we live um he's got a ton of great interviews going on as there as well i want to have him on as a co-host um and also you guys can find all my stuff at the wrestling classic pwc worldwide on twitter and uh once again thank you so much for coming on the show bobby it was super cool 
um i appreciate you wanting to be on the show and share your story oh, yeah. uh it's 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 uh I, I don't know now i'm like so optimistic to see what you do because i feel like i've learned so much more about you than i yeah. ever knew be before like we had yeah. this conversation so i'm like oh like i'm like i'm more invested so I hope everyone else feels the same way after watching this or listening to this um on uh, itunes apple podcast spotify wherever you're listening but uh keep your eyes out for bobby stevenson you haven't seen the last of him yet i would say well done. Yeah. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. <laughs> See you all later. Thank you. It's time to say good night. We sincerely appreciate your patronage and hope we've succeeded in bringing you an enjoyable evening of entertainment. Please drive home carefully and come back again soon. Good night. <laughs>